This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 500, The High Cost of Working Sick, by Alyssa Bass with GetRichSlowly.org. And I'm Dan, your host and narrator, bringing you some of the best blogs on personal finance in audio form. And a happy Friday to you. Welcome also to yet another milestone here on Optimal Finance Daily, episode 500. And before we get going, I want to thank Health IQ for sponsoring this episode. Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health conscious people, including runners, cyclists, strength trainers, vegans, and more. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com slash finance, or mention the promo code finance when you talk to a Health IQ agent. For now, let's get to our post and start optimizing your life. The High Cost of Working Sick by Alyssa Bass with GetRichSlowly.org It was big news recently when Hillary Clinton tried to go to work sick with pneumonia and was forced to leave a 9-11 memorial event. It became even bigger news when every woman in America pointed out she always works sick because there's always something or someone who needs you. Heck, I remember that time when I had a brutal flu and was bedridden, but had to haul myself up and go pick up my six-year-old at her tennis lesson. I had to stop the car twice on the way over and three times on the way back to vomit. Good times. But I digress. Let's talk about the going to work sick part of this story, and not just for women, for everyone, especially in this day and age when so many of us are part-timers or contractors or self-employed. In the new gig economy we recently explored on this page, there's often little or no paid sick time. It is estimated there are 41 million working people without paid sick days. This means one of two things. Americans who take unpaid sick time lose money or they go to work sick, which is worse. The state of sick leave. Currently, there is no federal law governing paid sick time for workers. It's handled state by state. Connecticut, California, Massachusetts, Oregon, and Washington, D.C. have implemented earned sick time laws, and even municipality by municipality, New York City and Pittsburgh, for example. The Federal Healthy Families Act would allow workers to earn up to seven paid sick days a year to recover from short-term illness care for a sick family member, attend medical appointments, or seek assistance for a domestic violence, stalking, or sexual assault issue. It's been introduced annually in Congress since 2013 and dies in committee each year. In September 2015, President Obama signed an executive order requiring federal contractors to allow their employees to earn up to 56 hours or seven days of paid sick time per year. That's as far as a national effort has gotten. But according to the U.S. Department of Labor, research supports paid sick leave over unpaid. Here's more. One, it's a public health issue. In one survey, 55% of workers not eligible for paid sick time reported going to work with a contagious illness, compared to 37% of those with sick time. In the restaurant industry, nearly 90% of workers surveyed went to work while sick, including more than half who did so always or frequently, including while experiencing vomiting or diarrhea. You want fries with that? Two, it's a healthier public issue. According to the DOL, a study of workers with and without paid sick time found that the percentage of workers who underwent mammography, pap test, and endoscopy screenings at recommended intervals was significantly higher among workers with access to paid sick time, and more of them saw a doctor or clinician regularly than those without sick time. Three, it's a business health issue. Paid sick time improves worker morale and productivity, attracts good employees, and reduces costly turnover. A business typically spends one-fifth of a worker's salary to replace that worker. Your job or your health? Back in the good old days when I worked for a company in an office setting, we had a shared desk system. That meant that day shift workers typically shared their desk, phone, computer, keyboard, drawers, etc., with a night shift person. A common scenario was that one shift worker would come to work healthy, and the other shift person would come to work sick as a dog, and then the healthy person would also get sick. I kept a value pack size box of bleach wipes, a vat of hand sanitizer, and a can of spray disinfectant in my safe drawer. Every morning when I would start my shift, I would have a five-minute ritual of disinfecting everything because it's not just the hands, folks, it's the particulates. There were a few folks in the office who were infamous for coming to work sick, honking and snorting and blowing their germs all over the rest of us and into the air vents. An aside, the first thing you should do on an airplane is shut off the air nozzle over your head. And if you can get away with it, all the nozzles in your seat group, because that thing is a highway of germs. That guy coughing in row 39, his germs are shooting at warp speed into your face in row seven through that air nozzle. Going to work sick has become so commonplace that it has a name, presenteeism, the opposite of absenteeism. Just like there's always that guy in the office who uses every last second of sick time, because it's mine. 
So there's the guy who comes in every day no matter if he has the flu or a heart attack. The rate of presenteeism goes up when the economy goes south, which means during the Great Recession and in the days since it ended, we are all dragging ourselves in looking and feeling like We asked the question on the Get Rich Slowly Facebook community, and the majority of folks said they either don't get paid sick time, or if they do, the last thing they use it for is when they are actually sick. They use it for when their kids are sick, their spouse is sick, they have an emergency of some sort that needs to be taken care of. Most sick time is accrued based on number of hours or days worked, which means a new employee gets little or none. Nearly all are use it or lose it and offer no remuneration for unused time. Some cash for being healthy would be nice, wouldn't it? When you are the boss. As a self-employed person, I don't really get sick time. Back in the spring, I had a bout of something that required antibiotics, and I felt really lousy, so I gave myself permission to take two days off and lie on the couch and watch Law & Order and eat popsicles. On the third day, I was back at it. A hit in the wallet, yes, but pretty quick recovery. The husband, on the other hand, also had a bout of something that required antibiotics, and instead of giving himself sick time, one of his two jobs has sick time and the other doesn't, he soldiered through, and then got sicker, and then a little sicker and then had to take time off from both for longer than if he'd been smart at the start. And no, I didn't say I told you so. Out loud, anyway. You just listened to the post titled The High Cost of Working Sick by Alyssa Bass with GetRichSlowly.org. And speaking of your health and wellness, a big thank you again to Health IQ for sponsoring today's episode. Health IQ is using science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health-conscious people. That includes runners, cyclists, strength trainers, vegans, and more. In fact, 56% of Health IQ customers save between 4 and 33% on their life insurance, and they're able to do that because physically active people have a 56% lower risk of heart disease, 20% lower risk of cancer, and a 58% lower risk of diabetes compared to people who are inactive. So just like saving money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ is saving you money on your life insurance for living a health-conscious lifestyle. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com finance or mention the promo code finance when you talk to a Health IQ agent. And that'll do it for another week of Optimal Finance Daily. And not only that, it wraps up our 500th episode. So thank you all so much for your support. And here's to another 500 episodes. Have a great start to your weekend, everybody. See you back here Monday. That's where your optimal life awaits.